I talked about the overnight figures for Doctor Who Legend of the Sea Levels last week. I did like a short segment of it on stream. I uploaded that to the channel only to watch it blow up in terms of viewing figures, in terms of amount of people watching and talking about it. And then I was reminded how quickly topics like viewing figures with a negative spin on them can just be some sort of massive brain rot in terms of comment sections. Lots of people who think that just because they dislike something means they're an expert in viewing figures. So what we're here today to talk about is the Legend of the Sea Devils seven day viewing figures in the UK. We've got the BARB figures here from the week commencing the 11th of April to the 17th of April. 17th of April was the Easter Sunday. And basically, uh, Doctor Who did not do too great here either. So the overnights were 2.2 million. However, over the course of uh, the next seven days on BBC iPlayer, on on-demand services and such, it actually had quite a big jump up of an extra 1.26 million. Uh, about an, an additional, just over a third in terms of viewing figures was uh, gained over the next week. And it ranked number uh, 25 for the entire week. And while it ranked 11th on the day, on the Easter Sunday, which was a pretty poor showing, all things considered, with the consolidated viewing figures with everything over the next week, it actually ranked third for the day, which is a significantly better result. However, this is a case of lowered expectations because third still got it 25th for the week with 3.4 million. Uh, the most watched show of the day, the most watched drama of the week and the drama that beat it on that Easter Sunday was ITV's The Thief, His Wife and the Canoe, which topped out the week with 8.6 million, the first episode. And one reason it did significantly well, the one reason it did so well uh, over the next seven days is that ITV released all four episodes of the drama over the next four consecutive days. So The Thief, His Wife and The Canoe was bingeable drama. It was something that can be binged. We've seen this with Luther. We've seen this with The Serpent. We've seen this for comedies like Peter Case Karsha, where if you put everything available on the iPlayer or everything available on demand, it typically does really, really well in the viewing figures because audience members can binge it. They can just go through it all in one go or just over a couple of consecutive days. So that really helps out the viewing figures and I think that's what caused The Thief, His Wife, and The Canoe to excel over the past week, including just a really strong marketing campaign. Posters for it everywhere, trailers for it everywhere, really good um, campaign for ITV. I still have yet to watch it, though. So, on the Easter Sunday, The Thief, His Wife, and The Canoe got 8.6 million. Britain's Got Talent got 6.9 million. Nice. And then all the way down here, we have Doctor Who with 3.46 million. This is a massive gap from second place to... <laughs> to third place here massive gap in the rankings when we actually talk about scripted entertainment not necessarily dramas but also comedies as well if you disregard the soaps coronation street em emmerdale and such doctor who ranked fifth for the week in terms of um scripted material the season premiere of derry girls on channel four which derry girls is the number one channel four or well, the number two channel four show sorry behind gogglebox but Derry Girls is one of the biggest shows in the country right now. The series debut, the series three debut, got 3.6 million on Channel 4. Uh, and also on that Easter Sunday, Gentleman Jack, its second episode, got 3.38 million. Just under Doctor Who's 3.46 million. Uh, it's a marginal win, but I think it's quite impressive that Doctor Who Legend of the Sea Devils was able to beat the second episode of Gentleman Jack. Once again, this is lowered expectations, I should say. It's still not a particularly good result. But it's interesting when you put things side by side with Eve of the Daleks. Now, Eve of the Daleks uh, got about 3.2 million overnight, but over the next seven days, it got to like 4.4 million. So it got a million more than Legend of the Sea Devils, which means that Legend of the Sea Devils has got, by quite a wide margin, the lowest seven-day figures in the revived series of Doctor Who. Once again, lowered expectations here. But also it ranked a bit lower than Doctor Who on that week. Eve of the Daleks ranked 26th. It ranked 26th, meaning that even though Legend of the Sea Devils got seen by a million less people, it still ranked a little bit higher, marginally higher, but that's just how the numbers work out. Eve of the Daleks also was the third most watched program of New Year's Day. Behind the Tourist, behind the Mass Singer, and then it was Doctor Who, Eve of the Daleks. Uh, so basically... Viewing figures are a bit complicated. So when people were like, it's just bad, there's a lot more to go. There's a lot more going on here. I actually spent this afternoon going through the Easter 2009 viewing figures because the last Doctor Who Easter special was Planet of the Dead in 2009. Um, and I think this is the mistake many people when talking about viewing figures are like, they don't bring it into the conversation because it hurts their narratives. So what we have with uh, Doctor Who Legend of the Sea Devils 
it got 3.4 million in terms of its seven day figure. The Doctor Who Planet of the Dead viewing figures was 9.54 million. So yeah, it's, it's significantly lower. However, it was not the most watched program of the day. It's not a case of, oh, Doctor Who just did exceptionally well that Easter Sunday, although it did do very well. It was edged out by Britain's Got Talent with 11.21 million. So, over the course of Easter Sunday Britain Got Talent viewership, since 2009 to now, it's dropped around 4-5 million. And that's the complication of, in terms of the viewing figures. When we go from 2009 to now, we've got a general correlation of viewing figures going down across the board. People will say Doctor Who's got less viewing figures now than it did in 2009 because it's got incredibly woker. However, has Britain's Got Talent got incredibly woker over the past 10-15 years? Has EastEnders? And Coronation Street, like Coronation Street and this Easter Sunday week got around 5 million viewers. Back in 2009, it was getting 10 million viewers. Like, in terms of the most watched of the week, Doctor Who Planet of the Dead was number five, and it, f it fell short to Britain's Got Talent, an episode of EastEnders, and two episodes of Coronation Street with around 10 million. It was bested by them, by episodes of Coronation Street. Basically, across the entire board over the past 15 years, Doctor Who viewing figures have just in correlation with viewing figures generally. That's just the long and short of it. Uh, Doctor Who has done the same thing as so many other TV dramas, and in correlation with general viewership trends, has declined. But it has not declined in an, at an exceptional rate to any other drama. Now, if we go through this top 50 of the BARB viewing figures, we'll also find that there's nothing here from Netflix, there's nothing here from Disney+, Plus, there's nothing here from Amazon. These are streaming services that do undoubtedly eat into terrestrial broadcast television, but not enough in the fact that they are able to make their own mark and their own impact in the top 50. I think it's only been maybe two or three times since October. Now, October was the first time the BARB started acknowledging streaming services on their on their platform, on their service, and I think it's only maybe two or three times that they've cracked the top 50 since then. Uh, so Doctor Who is still doing better than Disney Plus shows, it still does better than stuff on Netflix and on Amazon, etc. But in terms of comparison, com competing with itself, still not great. And also in comparison to other scripted stuff, it should be doing better. Now, Channel 4's Derry Girls, their absolute biggest show for the week, the season premiere, 3.6 million. When you compare it with Doctor Who Legend of the Sea Devils, now this was way more expensive, let's not make any mistake here. But it kind of shows that it's in pretty good company here. Now, this is low for, the, for Doctor Who. We have stuff happening in the near future in terms of its revival, its, its change. It's due a revamp. We'll see how that goes in terms of the viewing figures. But yeah, it's not a great result, but I think the context is incredibly important. If I took a drink for every single time I watched a viewing figures video and they completely neglected to mention the competition, what else was playing that week, how the other stuff during that week performed, like I'd be blind drunk by the end of the video because I'd just be continually drinking. Like context and everything just goes out the window in terms of these discussions. But not here, folks. That's why you're all here. One thing that hurt Doctor Who as well as the fact that, apart from just generally poorly marketed, was that this was just a one and done special. Shows like Derry Girls, shows like The Split as well, which got 4.1 million here. Shows like uh, The Thief, uh, his wife and the canoe these are shows which over the next 28 days are going to have multiple episodes that you'll be able to watch and binge and uh, and go through a box set on the iplayer or itv player on or for on demand also gentleman jack as well it would not surprise me if by the 28 days gentleman jack overtook doctor who uh, because the binge model the data just bears this out so for example doctor who revolution of the daleks during the overnights and the seven day figures it overtook the serpent which was the big like prestige new year's drama the year before last but then because you could watch the serpents as a bingeable box set on the iplayer once all the episodes came out for the 28 day figures it overtook it doctor who Legend of the sea devils does not have that going for it uh so that's why it's going to lose out to the competition in the long run uh you can say it's also because of the quality but there are also multiple factors here for example really bad tv shows get great viewing figures all the time uh and also great tv shows also just kind of fall and die same for films as well some great films are box office bombs some films that i don't like or many people don't like or are critical flops can sometimes do really really well at the box office the quality does not necessarily 100 percent bear out the viewing figures and the people who make that argument know that as well i think it can be a cumulative factor actor as well like for example legend of the sea devils didn't have great word of mouth after the fact uh, and also because you know maybe people were burned at the end of flux but flux in terms of 
the actual audience share and in terms of the rankings week on week on week did perform comparably to series one in 2005 obviously the raw number is substantially lower but in terms of the ranking in terms of the competition it performed comparably to 2005 the data and the numbers just bear that out. I'm sorry if that upsets many people. But then I remember when you go into the comment section of videos about about viewing figures, you're not dealing with people who know about the context, who know about the results, who know about the topic. You're dealing with basically a cult. <laughs> you're dealing with cults who don't quite know what's going on, but they're really, 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 really passionate about what they think is going on. Like I mentioned earlier, the ceiling for dramas this week was The Thief, the His Wife and the Canoe with 8.6 million, the highly marketed prestige ITV drama that broadcast on the Easter Sunday at 9pm. And because of the box set binge model, it was able to do really, really well over the next couple of weeks. But I'll be interested in knowing how episodes two to four on The Thief, His Wife and the Canoe do over the next few days. But yeah, Britain's Got Talent used to get 12, 13 million. Uh, now it's like lost five or six, seven million view viewers over the course of the several years. Does that mean it's gone super woke? No, it just means that TV has changed over the past few years. And also the fact that Doctor Who was the fifth most watched scripted uh, program of the week also shows that entertainment is bloody king. Entertainment is <laughs> entertainment is king, ladies and gentlemen. The UK is a miserable place at the moment. We will take our 1% club game shows. We will take our goggle box. We will take our uh, soap operas and our Britain's Got Talent, okay? <laughs> okay? We're a miserable country at the moment. Uh, one great thing about the BARB is that you can go to archive viewing data, uh, top 30 weekly programs. Let's go to 2005. Uh, May Was it May 26th? So March 26th, sorry, Doctor Who. Yeah, for example, Doctor Who was not even the most watched drama of its respective week when it came back in 2005. 10.8 million, still bested by EastEnders. And here's uh, more EastEnders just chomping at the bit underneath it. Um, Coronation Street as well. Coronation Street, the week Doctor Who came back, got 3 million viewers more than Doctor Who that week. And we talk about Doctor Who's relaunch in 2005 as this massive monumental thing watched by over 10 million people. And it still significantly underperformed several of the dramas and the scripted content that came out that week. TV viewing figures and habits have changed substantially. To compare Doctor Who to what it was doing over 10 years ago it's just it just shows an, an ignorance of the topic that's the bit that frustrates me and also if people were to say oh doctor who got 3.4 million viewers rusty davis is going to fix it rusty davis is going to make everything better and now it's going to get 20 million viewers over the seven day figures doctor who legend of the sea devils outperformed every episode of years and years with the exception of the first episode so you know, when you compare BBC Prestige TV, like it outperformed Gentleman Jack, okay? When you perform, when, actually, was Doctor Who, one second, BBC One, yeah, one second, in terms of BBC drama, Dinosaurs FA Cup, have I got news for you? Oh, okay, so Doctor Who, that Easter week, was the second most watched BBC drama behind The Split, Okay, so that's actually, all things considered, not a bad result for the BBC. It's a bad result by Doctor Who standards, but getting the second most, like, BBC One viewing figures for that week, that's actually not, not a bad achievement. That's done quite well. It, it is lower than it should be, and the split got 4.1, this got 3.4, that, that, that's quite a wide gap. But yeah, that's quite a, that's quite a margin. ST, his Dark Materials wasn't great viewing figures wise either. Uh, the first series was really good, but it underperformed Doc 2 Series 11. Series 2 did okay, but it underperformed compared to Doc 2 Series 12. When it comes to the actual sci fi genre competition, Doctor Who, although it's flagging behind many other shows, is doing really well in its field. Is doing really well compared to the other comparable genre competition. 